Welcome back to PSS, everybody. In today's video, we're going to be exploring the wonderful world of free VST plugins. Now, before you get into this, I just want to warn you, this isn't going to be one of those three minutes, hey, click here, here's my settings, and you go on with your day video. I want to get a little bit in depth, and if that's not the type of thing you're looking for, just exit out now. But um, if you've ever been in the situation where, you know, you try to copy someone else's settings, uh, you know, just play around with your tone, it never sounds the same, and you're wondering, you know, what they're not showing you off camera. So I'm going to be deliberately thorough and show you everything I do and compare the sound before and after and all that good stuff. So today we're going to be using freeware that is available to anyone at no charge on the internet. I'm going to put in a link in the description that goes to my personal Google Drive, at least for the channel, and you can download all of the plugins. Uh, from there that we'll be using. If you want to use other stuff that you already have, that's fine. You can apply the same principles to it. Uh, this also assumes that you have a, you know, some type of audio workstation program, that you have a USB interface of some type to, you know, plug your instrument in and some guitar that's not a complete piece of crap, you know, that's worth doing this for. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and we're going to be seeing if we can get a modern metal tone with freeware on an 8-string. Of course, you can apply this to a 7 and even a 6-string with a little bit of tweaking, and um, I think it sounds pretty good. The tone, uh, not the tone, the riff that we're going to be exploring and that I spent like 10 minutes just cranking out a couple different samples uh, is definitely not inspired by original work. It is uh, heavily draws upon a certain soundtrack that I really like from a game that I've been playing and more recently I'm starting to replay the the single player for so if you can guess what that soundtrack is or if you know the riff um, then feel free to comment first person that does gets bonus points which in YouTube doesn't exist but hey you'll feel better about yourself so let's jump right in so before we get started we're gonna take all of those VSTs that I list down in the description that you can download off of Google Drive don't worry there's no viruses or you know Lime wire cancer involved in any of this. Um, take all of that. It's all freeware. You can get if you Google search it. You can find it on your own. But I'm just going to throw in some of my favorites and uh, stuff for you know this video. I take absolutely no credit for the creation of any of these. There are people way smarter than I am uh, that made them. So uh, like I said, you can you can find them everywhere else on the interweb. So we're going to take all of that, dump it into some folder. I have mine involved involved installed in the cubase uh folder itself so you know i'm not really worried about backing any of these up they're just vsts and if the program crashes you know the c partition of my uh hard drive crashes i have way bigger problems so uh you could throw it wherever you'd like once you get into cubase um all you'll need to do if you haven't you know already linked to this folder or haven't done this before is go to plugin manager and I already have the path set, but all you would do is press start and then you'd go through and uh, link it to wherever folder you'd want. Sometimes if, you know, if it won't find it immediately, you'll hit sync and it will tell you, you know, you have so many new VST effects instruments, all that good stuff. As you can see, it you know lists a bunch of my custom ones that I've not sorted into folders or anything like that uh, as of yet. So then we'll go into our blank menu here. Now, this is what the end product is going to sound like with the mix and, you know, within within a mix with a bass guitar and drums as well and stereo, you know, eight strings. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, I can tell you that what you're going to hear is quite a bit worse than what I'm going to hear, though. I've uh, done a little bit of testing with the recording software and it does kind of make it a little bit more fizzly and takes away some of the bottom end. So, uh, and I, I noticed that on the pickup video as well. So just keep that in mind. It's not going to sound quite the same, but it still sounds okay, especially considering this is free S uh, VSTs. Uh, the first thing I want to get out of the way before we um, dive into how to get this tone, which you can kind of already see on, on the left here is listen to this. Pretty heavy sound, right? Well, that's the guitars by themselves. What a lot of people seem to forget with modern metal, especially, you know, when you're in these subsonic 
ranges is that the bass guitar is half the tone. Um, and you can especially hear that when it's soloed. So this video is only going to cover the guitars themselves. This will sound pretty damn good if you're playing with an album or, you know, just tracking them alone. But keep that in mind. I see a lot of people that say, oh, you know, I bought this fancy new amp simulation software and it just sounds like crap. It's so thin, blah, blah, blah. And it's really because we're not used to hearing them outside of the mix, you know. So just keep that in mind as we go through that this is only half the equation, but it still sounds really good. So we'll disable all these. I'll go through one by one, explain what's going on. I have two separate tracked guitars, one on each side. You can, you know, you can, some people double track them. You could do however you prefer on that. But uh, for this sort of thing, I just prefer to do single. So we'll start as if we have nothing there and that this is a blank um, uh, blank inserts. So for any metal guitar, I always start with a noise gate. And if you don't have Cubase or you don't have Logic, you can download, I think it's called REA something or another, but it has a compressor, gate, EQ, all sorts of free stuff. I know like for instance, Reaper doesn't have that sort of functionality, functionality built in. So you can download that for free. Um, but if you're using Cubase, whatever, they're all basically the exact same thing. They're all going to have pretty much all these same controls. Um, crank down the threshold to, depending on your guitar and your pickups and the audio interface and the gain that you have set on it, it's going to be a little different. But between the negative 50 and negative um, 55 decibels, generally what works pretty well for um, my setup. Release, I always go as quick as possible for the sort of, you know, kind of droning music that we're listening to right now and the rest is pretty much i leave default so we'll turn that on and next i have a mono to stereo just because of the way my um, usb audio interface is set up and i probably don't have it set up 100 percent correct i probably should have that as a mono in some way but um that's just to make sure that, you know, it's mono throughout. So if, if you're, you know, if you can hear it mono, then you might not need that. But, um, you know, it's it's not a big deal either way. The next is a compressor. I don't like to compress the living hell out of my guitars. Some people do. I'm not a real big fan of the loudness wars that's kind of taken over modern music. But um, you do need a little bit to just, you know, kind of make your softer picking in your you know, louder picking a little bit more the same and it just gives it a more consistent sound. So right now, this is, this is what it would sound like if we, um, you know, soloed it <laughs> pretty boring. See, that's why I have the mono to stereo and you can already kind of tell that with the gate off, it gets a little sloppy at the end. Um, so that's obviously why why we put it. The next stuff is where we start to have fun. Don't worry. So this is the boost pedal. And I see a lot of people using this TSE 808 or even the 1.1. And I like those pedals. I like them a lot, especially for uh, more classic rock, even you know stuff that isn't an eight string guitar material wise. But I have fallen in love with this pedal for several reasons. Number one, in the words of, I believe, Misha Mansur said pretty recently um, when he was promoting his Horizon devices that, you know, all these boost pedals that people have been using aren't even designed for modern metal. And that's kind of the issue with, you know, the TSC 1.1 and all that. They sound pretty good, but they just don't have the oomph, I feel like. So this is Ignite Amp's uh, Benevolent Tyrant Screamer. Uh, otherwise known as the TSB-1, and they also make the TSC-1.1. And this, I feel like, is a much better pairing for this type of music. It has the same controls for the most part, except with a couple added goodies. So you got your drive, always keep that the lowest, um, except for perhaps solos. If I need a little bit more gain, I'll turn it up a little bit. Um, always crank the tone to highest, always crank the level. But what these other tube screamers don't have is this sweep option. And this basically will... I mean, it kind of makes it more twangy, and I'll let you hear it, you know, in, in, in a moment. Boost adds a little bit more drive. I don't ever need it, but 
at least for guitars, but I, I have played with it for bass and solos, and it does sound good if, if you need it. So here's what it sounds like without and with. We'll play with the sweep. So that's kind of like what a Tube Screamer would sound like on its own. And you can hear it get more twangy and trebly. Um, that's why I always keep tone higher. Um, I would compare this kind of like to a Fortin grind pedal. It's not a perfect clone, obviously, but it's trying to achieve the same thing. You're trying to take a, more of the bass out. Uh, so it kind of acts as an, you know, a pre EQ, which is something that a lot of guitarists have used over the years to, to get their particular tone. And I, I'd rather do it here than in a pre EQ curve. Things get messy. I try to just do a couple passes at most. So that is our overdrive pedal onto amps. Now this is where stuff is going to be, especially up to the end user right now. I'm using this 14 amp, which is a Fortin. I believe it's not a Natos. I think it's a meathead is what it's actually simulating, but it's made by some Russian dude <laughs> and he's really good. Um, the only thing I've downloaded that he made that I wasn't really satisfied with was the Randall Satan, uh, VST, but everything else has been really, really good. So it's pretty amazing. It's one, one person doing it. Um, I swap between amps all the time. I'll let you hear a couple different ones and I'll throw in a few of my favorites, but basically just get a high gain amp. And for the most part, you can get a lot of them to sound exactly the same, uh, with a few, you know, some of them are going to be a little bit more digital sounding. Some of them are going to be, um, more wet at the end. Some of them are going to be a little bit more dry. Some of them are going to be more noisy. I like this one for this type of music. And like I said, we'll explore more as we go on. Um, crank the gain. I don't go past eight or nine most of the time because that's when a lot of these VSTs start to get noisy. Volume depends. Uh, some of them I have to crank it to be able to hear it. Sometimes I just leave it alone, but just for uh, this amp, it is pretty loud. Uh, this one has plenty of bass. Some amps you'll have to turn down, some of them you have to turn up, and I do a little bit of scoop on, on everything. So that's the 14. I also have been known to use the Legion. I like it quite a bit. You have a red and green channel. Any of these that are, you know, modeling the rectifier, uh, the dual or triple rectifier, or stuff like uh, an Engel Fireball, you're probably going to be able to get some type of modern sound out of it. So it all comes down to, you know, playing with it and personal preference. But you can copy all of these settings so far if you want to sound exactly like we're going to. Next is the most important part of all, and that is the cabinet convolver. This is where you throw in your impulse responses. And you can actually, for those of you that don't know what impulse responses do, you can play these, right? So I'll open it. That's an impulse response. Did you hear it? Just a little click. So basically that little wave file contains all of the personality of a mic and cabinet combination. So I like Excalibur a lot. Um, Excalibur 1 and 2. And I really like this Broman Mesa Boogie. You can use whatever you want. There's, God, there's so many. There's Orange. There's Marshall. There's Fender, Engel, I think there's a couple Randall somewhere, just Celestian custom cabinets. There's some actual songs um, that people have, you know, made impulse responses of, like, I mean, you can see everything here. Behemoth, Avenged Sevenfold, Anthrax, Amon and Marth, I mean, just everything. So you can get it to be almost exactly like another band sound just because of these impulse responses. Some of them sound wonderful. Some of them sound awful when paired with high gain uh, amplifiers. You'll just have to, you know, do a little bit of testing on your own. So I like the Excaliburs. I like these. And what I really like about NAD IR specifically is the, you know, you're able to blend them. Um, I think Lip, I don't even know how you say it. Lepou, is that the way you say it? L E P O U. They have. Um, a cabinet revolver as well, but it's a little bit buggy to me. I don't, it, it's has some stability issues. This one I've never had issues with. Maybe it's not for you. You can add more cabinets and stuff, but past two, the way I record it, it's becomes unnecessary. So this one does it for me. You can add a delay, 
all kinds of cool stuff, and we'll get into that later. But right now, I just like, you know, you can play with the balance, all that good stuff. So here's what it sounds like with just an amp, boost pedal, all that good stuff. Pretty awful. <laughs> um, sounds like something you would buy off of a $40 multi-effects pedal. Not great. However, when you throw on the cabinets... That's starting to sound like a real guitar. Um, and of course we can play with the balance. About right there is where, where I like it. And, you know, if there's, a, if there's a cabinet that you love, cool, you can leave it alone. Um, but I prefer two and to mix them because it tends to, like, knock out the parts of each one that I don't care for. Um, just the way I prefer to operate. So I really like these. And, I'll you know, those will definitely be in, in the downloadable folder as well. Um, and while we're here, I guess I'll show the importance of a boost pedal. So that sounds pretty good. But if you disengage the boost pedal, pretty sloppy, not as much gain. Um, that's why I really like this one. It uh, This sweep really tightens up the, the front end, so I like that a lot. The next thing we're going to do, I like using color EQ here. Um, you can use whatever EQ insert you can, if you know, you allowed it, if you're allowed to do multiple passes here, more than one, then you don't, you know, need this in an in insert or whatever. But, uh, I like the visualization for, for this purpose. So, um, I do a little bit of a scoop around 500 Hertz and then I bump it up a little bit around 1400 and some, you know, depending on the song or whatever I'm doing, I'll, I'll move those around, but it, um, it provides kind of the the framework for the first pass EQ. And if you haven't figured out by now, modern metal guitars, at least when you're going all digital, a lot of the times they require multiple EQ passes. Um, in a real studio, you want to get the tone perfect, like, you know, and not have to do a whole lot, maybe except for a low or high pass. But in the world of digital VSTs, you're probably going to have to do this a couple of times. So here it is without it. And with it. Darkens up the sound a little bit, uh, leaves more room for the bass guitar, and gets a little um, gets rid of the frequencies that make the ah sound. You know what I mean? Um, really, it's just personal preference. You can move those numbers around; it doesn't even have to be this shape. I uh, have seen a lot of people do the Batman symbol, as they like to call it, where you know they'll bump up, say, a frequency up here, and they'll do another one right next to it, and uh, you know they'll lower the the range and it'll look something like that depending on what you know range hurts they like you know um but this is the shape that sounds good to my ears and you know you can turn it off and on and compare and contrast on your own setup but uh generally i like to take out those frequencies and bump up those and the final thing i do get rid of all this crap is a pretty simple eq curve um I do a high pass around 100 hertz, gets rid of, you know, the bottom end that the bass would be taking over while still giving it enough room around here. Some people do like a hard cut at 200. It really depends on the frequencies you're playing at. Um, I also take around the 4000 hertz and I generally just move it around until it sounds good. Uh, otherwise, it, especially with these digital VSTs, you get a lot of fuzz and fizzle around there. And I try to take that out. And then between 7,000 and 8,000 hertz, depending on how uh, trebly the amp models and, you know, the cabs we're using, I'll just cut that off as well. So pretty simple shape with just a little bit of a dip. And like I said, I've seen people dip around more around here or bump up around here. It just depends on what you're going for. But generally, this will provide a pretty, pretty solid framework for, for a uh, modern tone. So let's... See how this sounds with and without. Here's without. And with. Without. And with. 
Now, I know at least some of you are thinking, well, it sounded better before you t did the EQ. And by itself, it always does. Um, it's kind of that bedroom phenomenon. You know, if um, you're jamming on a guitar with your Line 6, Veta, whatever, Spider amp, uh, it always sounds better if you crank the treble and crank the bass because that, you know, we perceive that as higher quality. But in a mix, it just sounds like, Oh, it's awful. You know, you can hear it. It sticks out like a sore thumb and it it's, you know, really it's detrimental to the overall sound. And that's a gimmick that a lot of, you know, so-called high quality sound equipment does is bump up the bass and bump up the treble, especially in like car stereos. I can't stand it. I've, you know, I'm trained to, to, to hear this and know that it's not good. So, um, and we can compare it in the mix once we once we do it. But this is basically all there is to it. Like I said, we'll we can play around with some amps and see how it sounds, but that's the end product. Of course, like I said, I double track guitars. So do one pass here, one pass on the next one, and use basically the same thing. Sometimes I'll change up the cab and the balance to give it a little bit of more spacious tone. But other than that, that's about it. Pretty good to me. So what happens if we move around these amps a bit? Let's try the Legion. Poland makes some pretty good stuff. Um, like Tone Stack on. This one provides, it needs a little bit more low end to my ears. See how it sounds. Not bad. And if we compare it to our other track. As I said before, almost virtually identical in a mix. Um, really, really hard to tell. You can, you know, scrutinize every little frequency and probably make it sound literally exactly the same. But um, Legion sounds a bit more wet to me. Uh, that's why I crank down the presence. But, I mean, overall, it's, it's pretty similar. Honestly, the reason I'm using this 14 amp is because I know that, you know, a lot of extreme metal bands use Fortin designed amps. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> might as well stick with the theme, but that's about it. And that, you know, it's up to you to, to get creative. You, it's just general, this general, uh, layout though, uh, noise gate to get rid of, you know, the, get a quick stop and start motion, uh, compressor to even out your loud and softer picking, uh, boost pedal, high gain amplifier, cabinet, and at least one passive EQ, maybe two or three. I would definitely wouldn't recommend pass three. If you get to that point, you're probably need to <laughs> revisit something around here. But I mean, that's it. And it sounds pretty damn good, especially for free. Considering there's not a penny spent on that, minus the, uh, the DAW itself, that's that's pretty impressive to me. Like I said, it sounds really good playing along. Um, you know, if you're practicing a song, it sounds pretty good just jamming alone. And it's not bad. You know, it's acceptable for demos to me. Now, I've heard full productions that people, you know, said, oh, you know, let's do a challenge and try to make an entire album of it. And um, I haven't been really impressed. But for what it is, I think, you know, there's a hell of a lot of value in these things for absolutely no money. And you could spend money on, you know, bias desktop and line six pod pod farm and all that good stuff. But, um, I don't think that it's really worth it in my opinion. You can, you know, if that's what, if that's like your end goal and you know, you you're on the go, but you know, there's definitely use cases that, that justify the cost. But to me, I'd rather use that money and put it towards something that I can hold physically in my hand, like a line six helix or an axe effects or a Kemper or a bias head, something like that. So um, that's my two cents, but regardless, it sounds pretty good. Not bad for free. It's, uh, it's hard to beat free. <laughs> so that is modern metal guitars in a nutshell, and we will see you next time with a bass, 
drums, and we might even cover solo eventually. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.